context in our mission. It's about facilitating and fostering a different narrative that they're creating for themselves called artists. And we've had global exhibitions and book launches and all over the world. Mumbai and Ghana and New York and Texas and all over. So people have been able to see the potential and the beauty in what they are creating. I'm Mariana Benzel. I'm co-founder and general CEO of Antus. You know, to open a safe house, you can just open a house and whatever, but what sustains and what really helps a victim to become a survivor and an overcomer is like the right process, the right area, the right people. So Gavi, my, my, my partner in this cause and I, we started Antus and, and it was the first, the first safe house. The main problem we see here is a temporality. Here, if you ask in a normal safe house how long the victims are allowed to stay, they say three months. What's the quality of the process of the, of the victim? You know, where are those victims? In three months, most of them, they don't even know what human trafficking is. They don't even see themselves as victims. That's why we broke those rules and we we're like, well, if, they don't, <laughs> if they're not useful, we should, you know, set like a personalized temporality. So it, it depends your age, how long you were exploited, do you have a support network? What are your plans? So a lot of factors, and then it doesn't matter if you stay here a year. We want you to be ready to just face the world and just face the world as a survivor, you know, as an overcomer. Two years ago, we opened our, our transitional house, which is part of our model, and that helps those victims who are ready for their process, but those who don't have like a, a, a solid support network. I think these two words, beauty for freedom, are basic in our vocabulary. Uh, we honor uh, your guys' organization because we have a lot of things in common. Um, and I think the most important one is that we, you guys, and, and, and we, we trust them. We believe in them. We believe in their skills. We believe in their hope. We're part of their life. They will never forget you guys. So thank you, Beautiful Freedom, for becoming VIP allies and for reminding them that they're important, that they matter, that their work, their skills, their love, their stories are going to be heard, seen in some other parts of the world. My name is Olga Barroso. I am from Mexico. I am a licensed therapist, a cognitive behavioral therapist. I started working with victims of human trafficking actually not so long ago. I started as a volunteer in Antu. It was just something I decided I wanted to do and everything just kind of like fell into place. As a woman in Mexico, you face and you hear a lot of violence towards women. We live in a culture that definitely preys on on the vulnerability of, of women and the, of the feminine. But I think the first time I actually read about and learned about human trafficking was maybe I was maybe 15 years old. I read a book um, from this really famous journalist called Lydia Cacho. Uh, it kind of like shocked me to learn that that was a reality for so many people in the world, especially in Mexico, especially for kids in Mexico. The Beauty for Freedom project impacted me in so many levels. You, you were such an inspiration, this project, this experience, even though it was the first one. <laughs> You know, it's such an inspiration for me as a therapist and as a person as well. When I got to know you guys and the way you work and how, like, how beautiful you are, and, like, in your spirit and the way you connected with the girls, to me, that was a huge surprise, like, personally. It was mind-blowing for me just to see you guys use creativity and art to help them heal. My name is Jair Montes. I'm a Mexican classical musician, but I've been working in whole type of music in my life. I start maybe when I was 14, 15. As a human being, you have to do something not just for you, for others to, you know, to develop yourself, to heal yourself, to, to learn. So that's why I totally accept the invitations to join this project. It's a very difficult topic. I think that in my case, <clears throat> I'm an artist and I can I can see how the art impacts society in a good way, but also in a bad way. I, I was talking with the girls during the, the project and I asked 
ask them why do you listen to music that you choose to listen and they were like I don't know and I was like okay it's so important to know because the words that you're singing sometimes the, the words are about war sometimes the words are about drugs even trafficking I don't know if if that is the best like message for the people for the young people especially but it's so important like be conscious about the things that we listen i've been in travel in my life i mean not in this kind of travel but since i am my parents are divorced and i used to live in a town with a lot of crime so music art in general about music always for me was an escape and music is so magical so you can sing and you can like breathe again if i sing i breathe again and i can uh, heal myself with the music how amazing and how beautiful it was for me to see these girls that they were living in very bad situation they were suffering and even with with that when we we were singing mexican songs or uh, uh, traditional songs they were like singing like if nothing have had happened before and they were like dancing smiling they were like super joyful and i was like oh my god this is like a life lesson too because sometimes we are complaining for nothing and these people they have had like really bad experiences like really hard and heavy experiences and they can totally smile and they can totally give you their love in like with waiting nothing can coming back you know we have to enjoy more life and try to to see the happiness in it i'm jeremy dubensky and i am a photographer and art director i'm one who kind of understands from personal experiences how much art can bring out emotion and and lead to mental and psychological breakthroughs that you don't know are are holding you back you know when when beauty for freedom calls i answer before coming to mexico it was a buzzword you know human trafficking and meeting these girls and seeing how they've coped with things and and understanding that their stories are so much different from mine but at the same time you know, i came down here expecting to see broken children and it ended up shaping into something completely different you know i saw women who were laughing you know when we gave them the cameras it was giggles and smiles and playing around my name is magda love i am um, uh, i'm a muralist and i'm a painter and i like to believe that i'm an artist in general i like to experience with different uh, mediums i started working with beauty for freedom in 2016 when we traveled to cambodia to work with a group of girls and it was just like a really transforming experience for me not only as a, an artist but also as a human being i have traveled to mexico several times so i feel like a very strong connection to mexican culture i also very aware of like all the issues on like mexican culture towards like violence against women when i first uh, learned about human trafficking i think it's like it's such a, an important issue in the world that uh, most of people are very uncomfortable to talk about just experience firsthand and how impact like the life of so many girls it was really like heartbreaking and i think once you overcome that feeling of being how overwhelming and heartbreaking it is and see how like small actions of people can like create such a powerful change it's just also like amazingly surprised by how strong the the human spirit is when it's given the right support right to like move forward and overcome is something that is so painful and so just terrible i think every survivor deserves that when i create curriculums uh, to work with anyone i always hope to like you know inspire people to to really live the fulfilling life that they dream about